Hi everyone! Not only beginners, but also experienced players sometimes don't know in which characters it will be most profitable to invest their resources. For a long time everyone knows that you can play for any character and go through all the content for him, but I can highlight those characters that can significantly improve your team. If I don't mention someone in this video, but you think that he should have appeared here, write about it in the comments. I am a simple person who can forget something. There will be obvious characters and those about which they often forget. Therefore, watch to the end, and I begin. Among Foster supports, Diona is one of the best. She provides shields and healing to keep her party safe. What's more, with her passive talents Drunkard's Farce, Diona's elemental burst can weaken enemies. Opponents who enter the AoE of Signature Mix have 10% decreased ATK for 15 seconds. Diona becomes especially powerful with the 6th constellation. With this ability, her AoE Elemental Burst provides additional healing to more vulnerable characters. Meanwhile, characters with over 50% health gain an incredible 200 Elemental Mastery bonus. She is pretty easy to build, give her a bow for energy recharge and artifacts for HP and you can already take her to the team. And what is it worth catching Timmy's pigeons with her elemental skill? True Pyro Archon Despite the fact that she is given to everyone for free on the third floor of the abyss, she can deal huge damage while not taking time to be an active character. Without exaggeration, almost all poor arms that are in a game will be very good for her. Give Shanlin enough energy recharge and set of artifacts, emblem of Severed Fate and you will be happy. Because of her snapshot mechanic, before using elemental burst, all buffs from supports should be on Shanlin. Then, even if these buffs are gone, the damage will remain the same. That's why the next character and she are literally made for each other. In most strong teams, these two are not separated. On Shanlin, it is the worth striving for the Force Constellation. This constellation the most necessary one. Plus 40% to the duration of the ultimate in her case is a lot. Bennett is a character which capable to do a many tasks. Despite his failure with first constellation, he is the most versatile character in the entire game. But even without them, he shows itself very well. Most often used by everyone to buff and heal the team. Requiring little effort to assemble, it plays a huge role in a party. To get the maximum buff from Bennett, you just need to have 200 plus energy recharge, height basic ATK, which is added from the character's basic ATK and weapon ATK, and the most upgraded elemental burst. Also, with the artifacts of the Noblesse Oblige, he becomes even more useful for a team. So, all the characters, those within the range of his ultimate, will be able to heal and then hit much harder. And in the presence of the first constellation, restrictions in HP are removed. Overall, a very good character, who everyone loves. Eh, if only he could use the Favonius sword. Shinchu is also one of the most useful 4-star characters on your account. With his elemental burst, he can maintain the Hydro status on the enemies, thereby greatly increasing the damage of your main DPS with the help of elemental reactions. And if he has emblem of Severed Fate artifacts, he will also deal good damage. Another feature of Shinchu is that with the help of his elemental skill, he reduces the damage your character takes. And his passive talent can even restore you HP, but it's more like a nice bonus. All of his constellations are important and beneficial, so try to get as many as you can, if it's possible. But the most important constellation I can single out is the 6th constellation. With this constellation, Shin Chu will be much easier to get an elemental explosion on cooldown. In general, pretty good character that will always come in handy, even if you have Yelan. These are similar but not the same characters that can be used together. 
Rosaria, a strong physical and cryo support who can act as a physical DPS herself. Personally, I like to play her as a cryo support, but other options are of course not excluded. This character is special, because with her passive talents, she can give herself and party members such a valuable additional crit rate, depending on the crit rate of Rosaria herself. That's why players use polearms with a crit rate on the Rosaria, but I'll still advise, give her Favonia. Almost all of her constellations help her to open up even better as a physical DPS. And a relatively fast cooldown of abilities makes Rosaria even more convenient and powerful. Of the good and cheap constellations, she has the second. Science the ultimate starts to hit not 4 times, but as many as 6. And the sixth constellation makes her an even better physical support. Kolei is the first playable Dendro character that is given to us for free. Not taking into account the Traveler, <laughs> and the Traveler is a 5 star character, you know. The character's abilities are mainly focused on reacting with the other elements and supporting the teams with additional damage. Plays well with Electro and Hydro characters. If you don't have Nahida, then it will be good to replace her in a team where she is needed, because she can well impose a Dendro status and use the Noblesse Oblige artifact set. There aren't many Dendro characters in a game right now, which drives up the price of Kolei even more. It will also be easier to move around the open world with her, because the cost of stamina for flights is reduced. Yes, and to explore Sumeru you need a Dendro character, it will be nice to upgrade someone. Oh, Sucrose. A character that can sink into the soul of many players. In any team that plays from elemental reactions, she will show herself very well. Why? Even a Geo or Animo party, it will show itself not badly, but it will definitely lose some of its potential. Because her token is an elemental mastery buff based on how much elemental mastery Sokros has. She also has good control of opponents due to her elemental skill and elemental burst. And how cool it is to defeat a large number of small opponents for her. And due to the fact that she can use a set of artifacts where the and Valor, she will show herself even better as a support. If she has the first constellation, she can use two elemental skill, one of the most needed constellations. Also, Sucros will not give up on the sixth constellation. Then the buff will be even stronger. In general, give her as much elemental mastery as possible and enjoy a strong character. I noticed that Yunjin is often overlooked, but lately she has started to be used more frequently. This character increases the damage of normal attacks of your main DPS. This buff doesn't apply to charged attacks, elemental skills and elemental bursts. How strong the buff will be depends on Yunjin defense. To be able to constantly buff your main DPS, you need to have an energy recharge weapon on her. If you play as Yoimiya or Ayato, but don't use Yunjin, then you probably didn't know about her, because she will make them much stronger. I can say that she was made especially for them. But there are a lot more characters who want to receive a buff from Yunjin. I love this character for how easy it is to build and what profit she gives. Ooh, well, I didn't forget about anyone, but if it's not, let me know in the comments. I tried to put as many characters here as possible. If you are interested in knowing more about someone, I can make a guide for him. Just ask. If you have watched this far, it means you like this video, then why not like and subscribe? to keep following my videos. But I don't say goodbye to you. See you later.